other types of masking in Illustrator are layer clipping masks and opacity masks. And I'll outline those in this lesson. And then in the next lessons, we'll take on a project where we create an invitation using everything we've learned so far, including these masking techniques. So we'll start with layer clipping masks. Layer clipping masks work on the same principle as clipping masks, a shape at the top of the stack that becomes the mask for the objects below. Only in this case, a layer clipping mask works inside a layer to mask everything, all objects in the layer. And all you need to make a layer clipping mask is a shape and a layer. So here's how to make one. I'm here with a six by six inch artboard. My background layer has a red square on it and I've placed a blue square directly on top that I want to use as a masking shape. A layer mask uses the topmost object in a layer stacking order to create a mask. So this blue shape is at the top and then I must have my layer selected. I'm not selecting any objects on the layer. I'm highlighting the layer itself. And now I can go down to the bottom of the panel and click this button here to make layer clipping mask. And now I have my layer clipping mask. The blue square has become a no fill, no stroke clipping path here. And now we can see the red background shape below and anything I create on this layer will crop to the masking shape. So I'll get my ellipse tool and select this red and I'm going to just dial it down, make a tint of it and then draw some circles. And you can see now they all crop inside the clipping path, the mask shape. But notice on the layers panel, the circles are piling up here in the stacking order above the clipping path, and yet it's still masking them. So because this is a layer clipping mask, everything on this layer, no matter where it falls now in the stacking order, is beholden to this clipping path. So this is not your ordinary clipping mask. And look, I can use the eyeball to turn this clipping path off and on and see what things look like without the mask. So these layer clipping masks can be incredibly useful. To release the mask, you might think highlight the clipping path and hit the release button, but the button is dimmed and that's because I need to select the layer. I need to highlight the layer itself to release the mask because this kind of mask and its behavior is really all about the layer. So with the layer highlighted, then I can click to release and now our masking shape here is just an ordinary path again, nothing special. Now what happens if I just go back and click that make clipping mask button again to make another layer clipping mask? Well now we can see the top shape in my stack has become the new clipping path and that's because that's how layer clipping masks work. Anytime you hit this make clipping mask button, you're telling this layer to use the top shape in the stack as a mask for everything else on the layer. But like before, when we saw the circles stacking up over the mask, once you have made a clipping mask, it doesn't really matter where it winds up in the stacking order. It will mask everything until you release it. But having this circle as a mask is not really what I wanted after all. So I'll go back to the layer and remember the layer must be selected and now I'll hit the button to release the layer clipping mask. And now I want my original square mask back. And here it is down here amongst all these red shapes and I'll drag it to the top of the stack then highlight the layer and then click the make clipping mask button at the bottom of the panel and we're good. Okay, now remember in the previous lesson when we were talking about selecting objects that fall outside the mask in CS4 and CS5? Well, layer clipping masks behave differently than regular clipping masks in this respect. I can click around here outside the mask and I'm able to select things that aren't visible. So be aware of that. And that's the way it is with layer clipping masks, no matter what your version of Illustrator. So you'll definitely want to lock and unlock your layers to keep from inadvertently selecting things. Now on the layer above, I have a texture, the spiral texture, and it's in the same red color as everything else, but I've set it to multiply and 60%. And I have a masking shape I want to use, a circle. It's already here and I'll just make sure that the layer is selected and then I'll click make clipping mask and now my texture is masked but only on this layer as you can see the circle mask does not affect the layers below and like I said before you can still accidentally select the parts you can't see over here so now I'll lock this layer so it doesn't cause me trouble and then I can go back down to my background and work on my circles undisturbed
Thank you.